morning. I'm Joyce Buckland. I'm one of the founders of the Real Linda Alberta Historical Society. And today we're celebrating the 100th birthday of the Dry Creek Ranch. The property was originally purchased in 1913 by David Smith, an immigrant from Scotland. David purchased the property and lived here also with his brother and sister-in-law. David passed away in 1925, and the ranch house and property were inherited by his brother and sister-in-law, Alexander Smith. And then when Alexander Smith, neither of the Smith brothers had any children. So when they passed away and Alexander Smith died in 1934, okay. Edgar Johnson bought the ranch from the Smith estate. He soon lost it to Bank of America. And in 1943, Bank of America sold it to Edwin Betzchart. Betzchart um, farmed it for a while, and then he, Betzchart only had the farm for a few months, and then it was sold to George Geiger. And the Geiger family purchased it in 1943. For about 11 years, the Geiger family had a dairy farm here. Um, Lots of animals, lots of family living here. And they also made a lot of modifications to the ranch house. Then they sold the ranch house in 1954 to the uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or the Mormons. And that's when the property became known as the Mormon Ranch. The Mormons changed the ranch house even more. They made modifications because they wanted to have little apartments for their missionaries. And they grew a lot of tomatoes and products for canning. Then the Mormons sold the ranch in 1984 to Charles Morris and Dan Page. And uh, Morris and Page farmed the area for many years until they sold it in 1994 to Sacramento County. After Sacramento County took over the ranch because of the flooding in this area, they decided to lease it to the Real Linda Alberta Historical Society so that we could use the ranch house as a museum. And so the society took over the ranch in 1995. And that's when we started having events here like Farm and Tractor Days, and later on classic car shows. And, uh, and we also built the Memorial Rose Garden that's out in front. That was constructed in about 1996 by a couple of our board members. How, large, so, is the, how large is the ranch? The ranch uh, is approximately 180 acres. Uh, the Historical Society originally only leased about three and a half acres, then it was expanded to five acres, and then it was expanded to about 40 acres now that we rent, or lease, I should say. You can take out the rent. <laughs> are, you, uh, are you producing anything on the ranch itself? At, at times, we grow oats on the ranch um, and make it into oat hay, but um, We've had other farmers, during the time that we've leased the ranch house area, there have been other farmers that have leased the rest of the property. And right now, the lease on the major property is with Sacramento Metro Fire. Uh, they want to do control burnings and things like that out here. So, right. thank you for coming today. Hope you enjoy your tour of the ranch house. So one of our feature items downstairs is our memorial plaque, and basically people can donate money to have a memory of their loved ones. So we have different languages through the time period, the name and the date of birth and year of death. So this is one of our recent donations, and it's a Victrola, and it was donated by Dixie Russ from 
is the daughter of Art Bruss, who ran a local bookstore for many years. So we're in the hallway and stairway of the Dry Creek Ranch House, and we're heading upstairs to see some more of our exhibits. Come okay, try. and we're going to follow you. So we're in the upstairs portion of the house, and there are four bedrooms, and each bedroom has a closet, which is a sign that Dave Smith, when he built the house, definitely had some wealth. And you can also see the highlight, just like downstairs in unique rounded corners. And each room has different items. So our first room, I call this our local history room. Okay. And this we have a variety of memorabilia from the area, including the evolution of school desk, train lanterns, old calculators and adding machines. Neat. Okay, we're going to follow it to the next room. Okay. The next room, and we dubbed it our children's room because Garrow Geiger, one of the descendants, children of one of the families known for their dairy farm, this was her bedroom. So we kind of modeled the room after a children's bedroom. And here we have a variety of an different antique toys and bedding, including dollhouses. Rag dolls. This was a, uh, a hobby that they had, right? This is Rose Mueller's dog collection. She was an active uh, resident in the community and donated her dog collection. And friends and family would collect dogs from all over the world and give them to her. There's mm -hmm. Good. So Rose Mueller, uh, was well known in the community for many, many years, and she collected small ceramic dogs. And so her friends in Ruland and Alberta, whenever they would travel anywhere in the U.S. or even in any other country, they always looked for little ceramic dogs to bring back for Rose as a souvenir. So when Rose was near the end of her days, she decided she wanted the Historical Society to have her collection of all these little ceramic dogs. So she donated the case that you're going to show upstairs, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she donated the entire case and all the ceramic dogs to the society. And originally we kept it down here on the first floor of the ranch house. But then when we got the children's bedroom created upstairs, we decided that we would move the collection up there. However, the collection of dogs, there's around 800 of them. And it was kind of too much for the members or the board anyway to want to move the collection so we contacted the girl scouts to help us and they sent over three young girl scouts i would say they were in their early teens and it was incredible to watch them they carefully removed every dog from the case packed it up then when the case was empty we moved it upstairs and they put all the dogs back in the case upstairs but what was so fun with it is they realized that some of the dogs, there were like two dogs that were a pair or a collection, or maybe there was a collection of three dogs in a set. And so the girls made sure when they set them up in the case upstairs that all the matching dogs or those that were a part of a set were together. It was just really fun to watch the girls do it so lovingly and gently and carefully and, and they enjoyed every minute of it. So, thank you to the Girl Scouts. <laughs> Start. Okay. So, we have some antique high chairs. Along with that, we have this child's rocker. And what's neat, it's like a transformer chair because it can also convert into a high chair. Okay. Okay, we're going to the next room. We're going to the next room. And we're going to pass by our lovely singer machine, antique singer machine. Okay. Okay. Now we call this our ladies' room. It has a variety of antique outfits. And really, and also a replica quilt because some of the type of blankets they would have are handcrafted quilts. So it's a replica of what you might have seen 
on their bed. What is that? Just now. A lot of times you would have your armoires like this here in most houses that's behind these dresses, and they would hang your clothes up in there. Uh, you could tell again that there was a more wealth because each of the rooms you'll notice have a closet. So the idea that they had to have enough storage to have closets or have the money to build a closet was a sign of status. Okay. Period. All right. Next room. Next room. We have our special exhibits room, which which was believed to be an upstairs restroom at one time. Though when we inherited the house, the walls were bare, and there was nothing in here. And first, we have our panel, and this kind of shows us what the inside of the wall looks like. So we're going to head back downstairs. Okay. 